absolutely lifts my heart to see so many people here today standing strong for life. Give it up for yourselves. Woo! You have come here today because we may have lost the Eighth Amendment, but we are far from being a defeated people. We are a people of hope. We are a people of courage. We are a people of decency and love. And we are the people who believe in a better tomorrow where all of our children are cherished equally. Last year, last year we mourned the loss of the right to life of pre-born babies. But now we say that the time for mourning is over. And now we say that we remember too that we held the line in this country so that Ireland kept the proud tradition of protecting both mother and child for 50 years after most of our neighbours had fallen to the abortion industry. And you should take solace today in what you have achieved and in those hundreds and thousands of lives that you saved as we face together now what must be done. For, for, for it is time for us as a movement to face up to the task of restricting the harm of this cruel abortion law and of ensuring that Simon Harris's abortion regime is subject to our endless scrutiny. It's time to face the challenge as a movement of establishing political and media structures to ensure that we can and we will rebuild our broken culture. Because a society, a society that decides that the most helpless of all its citizens can be deprived of their fundamental rights is a broken culture. And last year, Irish people dressed up killing as compassion. They embraced the pretense that abortion is healthcare and they voted for a lie that tells women they have a choice when really what they're telling them is that if you have a crisis pregnancy, you are on your own. And I remember last year when the actor and activist John Connors described what happened on May 25th as the most shameful day in Ireland's history. And I agree with John Connors, he was perfectly right. It was the most shameful day in the history of this country. But we will overturn what happened last May. Because the people may have spoken, but the last 12 months and the last six months in particular have shown us exactly how wrong their decision was. And in fact, as many yes voters have been posting on social media, the last six months have shown them too exactly how wrong their decision was. Because the ink is barely dry on Simon Harris's cruel and barbaric abortion bill, and already the horror stories are starting to emerge. The HSE, to their shame, on their website, is advising women who undergo medical abortion that the bodies of their babies can be flushed down the toilet. So much for caring about women. And abortion doctors, the ones who told us in the referendum that there'd be no increase in our abortion rates, are now telling us that at least 10,000 abortions will be carried out in Ireland every year. So that's proved itself to be just one more lie. That's treble the number of abortions that were previously recorded on Irish women. And who in their right minds wants the number of abortion to treble? And now we know, in these terrible six months since Simon Harris pushed through his bill, that a 15-week-old pre-born baby was aborted in the National Maternity Hospital on the advice of doctors who suspected what they described to those parents as a fatal abnormality. After the abortion, the test showed there was nothing wrong with the child. Nothing can bring that baby back to those devastated parents now because abortion is irreversible. Abortion cannot be undone. And Simon Harris told voters that they have to repeal the Eighth Amendment to keep women safe. Yet two women have died on his watch in all maternity hospitals since abortion was legalized. So, so many lies were told to repeal the Eighth. And now, in this country of ours, which was pro-life for so long, we will have so much death. And Son Connors was right. It was the most shameful day in Irish history. 
But I say this to you here today, it is not our shame, because our hands are clean. You did not vote for this, and you do not bear that shame. So we know that 10,000 babies will die by abortion this year, but we did not vote for that, and we will work to change that. Babies with Down syndrome will be targeted as they are in every other country, but we did not vote for that and we will work to change that. And women will suffer and be exploited by this abortion industry, but we did not vote for that and we will work to change that. And we voted for life because it is only life that can endure, only life that gives hope and only life that will make us a great pro-life nation once again. So your conscience is clear and your hands are clean. There is no blood on our hands and we should remember that. Just as we remember it for the 723,000 of our fellow Irish men and women who would have no part in a regime, an abortion regime, that is losing favour in many other countries where the reality of the harm that abortion causes can no longer be denied. So in the United States, in Poland, in Hungary, even in Britain and in many other countries, the tide is starting to turn and sometimes the tide is turning. And together, we, the pro-life people, shall be part of turning the tide in Ireland too. And I will say this as I look out and as I walk down O'Connell Street today and all the young people and all the families and the amazing energy and joy you brought to the Rally for Life. That sometimes I think we live in very strange times where children are increasingly seen as disposable. But you see, that too has unforeseen consequences. Because at a time in this country as everywhere else of falling birth rates and unprecedented demographic change, the truth is the future belongs to us. It belongs to those of us who do not abort their children, but who welcome and cherish every single child. And that change, that change that we're starting to build now may come sooner than we imagine, because it is only in life that there can be a future, only in life that we can rebuild, only in life that our children will inherit this land and make this a pro-life nation once again. And the 1916 leader, Tomás MacDonagh, said, even after the rising, that we as a people refuse to yield even to defeat. And we refuse to yield even to defeat because the alternative is unthinkable. The alternative is to abandon our most helpless babies to a 